Hello everyone, my name is Simin Tabasi and uh, during my presentation, I will discuss about most recurring deficiencies we encounter during oral solid drug product quality assessment. Due to time limit, in order to better focus on the objectives of this presentation, I will assume majority of attendees are familiar with the basics of and the submission. The next few slides are messages from OPQ. Since previous speakers have uh, presented them, I will only click through them. This presentation is intended to provide you with some of those most common deficiencies that impacts review cycles and drug approval. Due to time limit, I will cover some of deficiencies related to setting acceptance criteria for drug product description, drug product assay, and organic impurities, only those covered by ICH Q3A, Q3B, and uh, drug product specific USP monograph. Second, I will also discuss some common deficiencies in drug product stability. For each of above section, I will provide points to consider when responding to deficiency letters. And finally, I will provide a case study with two challenge questions. The acceptance criteria for appearance of dosage form is product specific. It is a qualitative description of dosage form based on final appearance, such as shape, size, dimension, color, engraving, scoring, and overall integrity. The most common failure is excluding acceptance criteria for product integrity or defect in release and regulatory specification. In such case, below OPQ general deficiency language is cited. Some applicants may respond that tablet or capsule defects are being tested during manufacturing process, so it is not necessary to include it in product specification. Applicants should consider that in process evaluations of defect in tablet or capsule, do not address the changes that may happen due to warehousing, packaging, as well as instability during shelf life. In this section, acceptance criteria for assay of all drug product is commonly 90 to 110% of label claim. However, in case of narrow therapeutic drug product, the assay limit is 95 to 105% of label claim. Based on ICHQ6A, the following deficiency may be cited. Applicants should consider that, based on ICHQ6A, as a control, the agency may recommend a title limit for release specification to ensure quality during drug product shelf life. In this section, the product specification may include the following list of impurities specified identified and specified unidentified degradation products, any unspecified degradation products, and also total degradation products. Degradation products which should be controlled in drug product specification are first metabolites, which evaluation of farm tox, clinical, etc. is required. Second, impurities from degradation of drug substance, as well as those impurities formed during manufacturing and storage of drug product. Additionally, impurities formed due to interaction between drug substance and other components of drug products, such as excipients, container closure, etc., must be controlled. The basis for setting limit is first, drug product USB monograph recommendation, if exists, which is only applicable to specified identified degradation products. Second, ICHQ3B recommendations in which a specified identified uh, degradation product should not exceed qualification threshold, a specified unidentified degradation product should not exceed identification threshold, any unspecified degradation products, regardless of being identified, 
or unidentified should not exceed identification threshold. One of the most common deficiencies is including those process impurities of drug substance, which are non-degradation product in drug product specification at ICHQ3B qualification threshold. Controlling these impurities of drug substance in drug product specification is not necessary, since these impurities will not increase during shelf life of drug product. If any applicant wishes to include them in drug product specification, it should remain within ICHQ3A limit. Another common deficiency is that the limit for any unspecified degradation product is above ICHQ3B identification level. Next is failure to identify and control all known degradation products which may potentially form in the drug product. Below is uh, an example of deficiency language which is cited when such information is missing. Applicants are recommended to access publicly available information on approved drug products, scientific reports, literature, etc., to ensure that relevant degradation products are controlled and methods are adequately validated. A specified degradation products with a limit above qualification threshold is considered acceptable if supported by the following justifications. First, USB monograph recommends a limit above qualification threshold or um, supporting uh, data from non-clinical studies, publicly available information, or comparison to the RLD using the same method of analysis. Common deficiencies are first, Failure is a justified proposed limit of higher than qualification threshold for degradation product based on the above criteria. I would like to mention that QSAR is a useful tool for prediction of toxicity of an individual degradation product, but generally is not conclusive for qualification purposes. Next is failure to justify the degradation product is a human metabolite. This is a case when firm sets the limit above qualification threshold and claims that the impurity is metabolite without uh, justifying by non-clinical studies, publicly available information or toxicology studies. Failure to adequately compare the impurity in and of product to that of RLD is another one which is very common. As a prerequisite, applicants are expected first to demonstrate that the degradation product of interest in ANDO and RLD are in fact the same, using specific methods to identify and characterize the degradation product, simply comparing retention times of impurities in ANDO and RLD products instead of identification and characterization is not acceptable. Unless described in product-specific USB monograph, the total degradation products is the sum of acceptance criteria for individual specified, identified or unidentified degradation products. Applicants should uh, consider that significant human metabolites should be excluded from the sum of total degradation products. The limit for the sum of all impurities, including metabolites, should not compromise the assay potency of drug product through shelf life. One of the most common deficiencies is a failure to justify proposed limit for total degradation products. Below is OPQ general deficiency language that perhaps many of you have received. Based on ICHQ1A, a minimum of three submission batches should be placed under stability conditions and provide the stability results of samples under the following conditions in the applications. 12 months under control room temperature, six months under accelerated condition, and in case of uh, significant changes in samples under accelerated condition, 12 months stability under intermediate conditions should be provided. Common deficiencies. First, insufficient stability duration to support 24 months expiry. For example, the proposed expiry is based on six months accelerated and six months long-term stability, which is not acceptable. 
Next is the proposed expiry is based on a six months accelerated and 12 months long-term stability, but significant changes in product quality during six months accelerated condition occurred. Firm did not provide intermediate results. Another one is significant changes happened in um, product quality during first three months of accelerated condition. In such case, the expiry will be based on duration of long-term stability. In all above cases, we refer all applicants to ICHQ1E for calculation of expiry. Another very common deficiency is lack of mass balance in stability data for assay versus total impurities. For example, noticeable decreasing trend in assay, but total impurities remained unchanged. Please keep in mind that although during method validation and force degradation studies, mass balance between assay and impurity methods may have been established, but that cannot be used to undermine lack of mass balance and stability results of assay and total impurities. Next is lack of justification and investigation for out-of-trend and out-of-specification results. One example is uh, firm reports out-of-specification level of unidentified degradation product without being investigated. The justification such as it was a one-time occurrence or the degradation product could not be isolated and investigated adds more to assessment cycle. Lack of stability results for the constitution of drug product per labeling is another one. For example, the labeling recommends that the product be dispersed in a juice or water and administered to children or infants. In such case, based on a labeling, orally equivalency studies such as crushing, suspending, viscosity, dose recovery by a spoon and dropper will be requested. Additionally, depending on recommended storage time, whether it's a one week, one month, for example, a full stability results per specification at varying time points will be requested. And finally, lack of data to support the stability of solid state at release and during shelf life is another one. The stability of solid state is requested when the rock substance is low soluble, PCS class one and or four, the solid state of a drug substance thermodynamically is not the most stable. Manufacturing process may result in a change in a polymorph, such as wet granulation dissolving API in solvent. And finally, firm also should consider that conversion in crystal shape, for example, to needle shape when applicable, may impact the processability of drug product. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize that in addition to numerous ICH guidance, the US FDA has issued many guideline documents and literature papers. It is responsibility of applicants to learn, understand, adopt, and apply the regulatory expectations before launching drug product development, manufacturing, preparing, and submitting ANDA applications. Although filing an ANDA is significant challenge, applicants should first focus on the end goal, developing and manufacturing of safe, potent, and effective drug product, followed by receiving FDA approval. I would like to express my gratitude to Dr. Rosencrantz, Dr. Said, and Dr. Gill for their support and encouragement. Before I close my talks, I would like to present you two questions. This is a case of narrow therapeutic drug product. MDD is two milligram and the assay is 95 to 105%. The acceptance criteria for impurities are in line with ICHQ3B recommendations. Impurity Y and impurity Z are both specified identified degradation product and the limit for each is no more than 1%. Impurity at RRTX is a specified unidentified degradation product with a limit of no more than 0.5%. Any unspecified degradation product is no more than 0.5%. 
based on this presentation, is the overall acceptance criteria acceptable? I give you a few seconds for response. Yes, the overall acceptance criteria for organic impurities are acceptable. However, please keep in mind that the overall impurity profile, I mean sum of all impurities for this product is about 3% and the assay limit is 95 to 105%. If impurity levels in a releasing batch is at or close to the specification level, there is a high potential for assay failure during ship life. For the same product, firm proposes a limit of no more than 3.5% for total degradation products. Based on this presentation, the limit for total degradation products should be no more than 3.5%, 3%, 2.5%, or 2%. I'll give you a few seconds to respond. The proposed limit for total degradation products of no more than 3.5% is not acceptable. It should be no more than 2.5%. Total degradation products as described in MAP 50172 is some of individual specified, identified, and unidentified degradation products. With that, I would like to thank you all for attending this presentation. And thank you, Samin. Oh, we're getting our audio reconnected here. Thank you, Samin. This is Jeff. Uh, we're just going <clears> to <throat> go ahead and uh, switch the layouts here a little bit to get ready for our next presenter. And uh, the uh, uh, AE, if you're all set, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. You should be able to hit the right there. Go ahead and accept. And uh, you should be able to take control now, AE, and I will turn it over to you. Hi everyone, um, the title of my presentation today is a common CNC issues for manufacturing process and the security assessment. In this presentation, I'm going to discuss the integrated uh, process and the uh, security assessment in our office. Uh, explain the review expectations and also examine common process related to hey, I, 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 um, I, I apologize for interrupting. This is Jeff. We're having just a little bit of trouble hearing you. Um, oh. So what we want to do is check real quick the microphone icon. Uh-huh. The green mic icon. Um, if you're uh, using it, are, are you using a headset or speaking directly to the laptop? Oh, and now, oh, you're muted. Okay, let me unmute you. Uh, so, yes. uh, so can you hear me now? Uh, not very well. Are you using a headset or are you speaking directly to the laptop? Uh, I'm speaking directly to my laptop. Is this still okay now? Uh, okay, so I'm going to use the uh, dialing number.
And thank you for your patience, everybody. We were having a little bit of an issue. Are you dialed in on your cell phone, Katie? Yes, I'm dialing with my cell phone. Okay. Um, okay. Could you please it now? on your computer? Hello? Hello, we can hear you great. Could you please turn down the speakers on your computer? Oh, yes. Okay, I just did. Okay. And now, if you'll just uh, speak a little bit louder into the cell phone, we should be all set to go. Okay. Uh, so, in this presentation, um, this the integrated process and the facility assessment uh, in our office explain the new expectations and also examining common process-related uh, deficiencies. The Office of Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Assessment, or OPMA, is a sub-office uh, in OPQ we perform evaluations of pharmaceutical manufacturing by integrating the assessment of manufacturing process, facilities, and the pre-approval inspection. An OPMA reviewer provides a holistic uh, manufacturing assessment of the process, facility, and microbiology information for solid oral dosage forms. In this way, a more informed and risk-based decision can be made. This slide illustrates the uh, holistic manufacturing assessment uh, process. During the assessment uh, review, the assessor will look at the adequacy of process understanding and also to determine if critical controls are in place and uh, well documented in the application. And um, if it's determined that a pre-approval inspection is needed, then the assessor will participate the pre-approval inspection with an ORA officer to determine that whether um, the facility is capable of implementing the listed manufacturing operations in conformance to CGMP and also to see if there's any data in category concern for this application. Um, the purpose of our manufacturing assessment to evaluate the adequacy of final commercial scale manufacturing and process. We're using a risk-based uh, uh, concept to provide the assessment. A robust manufacturing uh, process uh, with a well-defined control strategy should be developed so that the drug product produced will have the assistant, uh, consistent quality.
So, um, Assessor would um, look at the manufacturing process development report in module 3.2.2 and the uh, adequate process and product understanding should be demonstrated. In addition, um, a risk-based approach for the manufacturing process should be implemented. The assessor also look at the executed uh, batch records, and this is uh, required by 21 CFR Part 314. And the um, batch record, executed batch record, should be included in 3.2.R. In addition, um, the Executed batch records establish the baseline for the manufacturing process and, and control for the commercial batches. The assessor also uh, examines the commercial batch record or the master batch record. In the master batch record, a batch formula the manufacturing process should be clearly um, defined and also um, equipment uh, uh, process parameter ranges and also in process control should be documented in the master batch record. In the next couple of slides, I'm going to discuss Ten common process-related uh, deficiencies. The first one is uh, related to the API polymorph. It is uh, documented that the manufacturing process could be harsh and uh, create additional stress to the API, and this will, in turn, promote the polymorph conversion. So um, if the risk for potential polymorph conversion is identified, um, additional data such as uh, XRD or the IR data should be provided to demonstrate that there is no change in the API uh, morphic form during processing and also a time storage. In addition, the suitability of the analytical method should also be demonstrated. If there's any uh, polymorph change identified, um, the effect of these potential changes on the in vivo and in vitro performance of the drug product should be discussed. Blend uniformity and uh, stratified content uniformity are very important uh, uh, studies to demonstrate that uh, the produced drug product will be of consistent uh, quality. For your uh, BU study, process development data should be provided to justify the BU sampling plan and the acceptance criteria. In addition, if you are going to uh, propose a larger BU sampling size to meet the BU acceptance criteria, additional justification should be made. And also, uh, for a high-risk product. Stratified CU sampling plan and acceptance criteria may be also be needed 
for the commercial uh, batch manufacturing. The third example is related to uh, lack of supporting process development data to justify the critical process parameters and uh, in-process control. Um, if you are uh, proposing a wide range of the weighting control for a functional coding process, um, it uh, may not be uh, acceptable. Additional data should be provided to justify the uh, weight range control for this process. The same thing applies to IPC for the granule size and the moisture content. Uh, process development data should be provided to justify the proposed acceptance criteria. Many times the proposed commercial batch size uh, is different from the executed batch size. In this case, um, the uh, differences in the equipment percentage utilization should uh, be discussed. Uh, and also, uh, if there's any difference in the um, process as it relates to the proposed process parameters, such as the blending time versus the, the blending rotation speed should also be uh, justified. And also, um, for the master batch record, clear instructions um, to the operator should be provided in the master batch record. Um, oftentimes, we see a subjective manufacturing process description uh, for example, for a high shear granulation process, the statement would say, if necessary, add additional amount of granulation fluid. This does not provide a clear instruction to the operator. So uh, in consideration for the IR response, you should provide process development data to justify the amount of granulation fluid rate of binder addition and wet marking time for this um, critical high shear granulation process. We also recommend you to establish acceptable granulation endpoints such as the impeller torque and the power consumption so that uh, uh, the granulation endpoint can be uh, clearly defined. Production yield is also an indication of the robustness of your manufacturing process. If no low yield is noted, the root cause of the low yield should be properly investigated or justified. For example, is it caused by additional sampling or is it because the batch fund is uh, small which cause the low yield. If process issues are identified, then the mitigation strategy to ensure a robust manufacturing process should be provided in the application. Um, the drug product intermediate hold times and conditions should be uh, identified and uh, uh, justified with uh, additional uh, adequate data. Uh, the test that's used to conduct to justify the hold times and uh, uh, conditions should address the quality issues. For example, if you have a low dose drug then just providing the assay results for the final blend 
to justify your whole time may not be sufficient. We would like to see the BU data as well. And in addition, if uh, you're proposing a whole time for the granulation fluid, then microbial limits may need to be provided. So uh, considerations for the uh, IR responses to the whole time deficiency, uh, identify the high risk intermediates and also discuss a CQAs that may be affected by holding the intermediate for extended uh, period of time. And also CQA data should be uh, provided to support the proposed whole time. Um, regarding the uh, process parameters for the commercial uh, batches, um, we would like to see uh, ranges, uh, process parameter ranges uh, specified and also justified with uh, either uh, established uh, scale-up principles or based on your uh, development experience as I said earlier, we're uh, looking for uh, commercial readiness. So uh, providing those data is a way to demonstrate that uh, you are uh, understanding you know, the critical process parameters and what's required to manufacture your product. And sometimes uh, the applicant would proposed to use sublots for the commercial batches. And uh, one of the common deficiencies is uh, inadequate IPC control for each sublot. In the IR response, please provide sufficient material characterization and process controls for each sublot before combining to ensure that variation in sublots is not masked by subsequent unit operations. And the last example is uh, about equipment compatibility. If you have a liquid or semi-solid formulation and the product uh, contains co-solvents or surfactants, then leachable or extractable study um, for the polymeric manufacturing components, uh, such as tubings or filters, uh, should be uh, considered and provided. You can consider to use USP 1663 and also USP 1664 principles and general approaches to demonstrate that all formulation contacting polymeric components are not reactive, additive, or adaptive to alter the safety and quality of the drug product. I want to say that over the last few years, the quality of submissions we receive has great, uh, greatly improved. And avoiding the 10 most common deficiencies that I just discussed will further improve the quality of your application. The agency used a risk analysis to um, make uh, process and control decisions. We recommend continued use of QBD principles in establishing material controls, CPP, uh, IPCs, and the finished product uh, acceptable criteria. The applicant should prepare their application with adequate data and discussion to demonstrate that uh, there is a good process and product understanding.
the applicant should verify that the commercial batch records include uh, clear instructions for the operator and also um, the process parameter ranges and also in-process controls are uh, well justified. If the proposed commercial process deviates from the, the development or the executed batches, an explanation should be provided. And also, if the proposed commercial process parameters and controls deviate from the um, development or the ex exhibit batches, adequate justification should be provided. I would like to thank my OPMA colleagues, uh, Mahesh, Rocky, and Rob T for their help uh, in preparing this presentation. Now let's go to a challenging question. The first one is, which office in CEDAR performs evaluations of pharmaceutical manufacturing by integrating the assessment of the manufacturing process, facilities, and uh, pre-approval Section. The correct answer is OPMA. Question number two. Select the true statement. A. The purpose of manufacturing review is to evaluate the adequacy of final commercial scale manufacturing process and facilities. B, FDA conducts risk-based evaluation for incoming applications. C, a robust commercial manufacturing process with a well-defined control strategy that produces drug products of consistent quality is not required for drug application. D, all of the above. So the correct answer is A and B. So this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Pei. That was very well done. And thank you so much for uh, rolling <laughs> so effectively there with the little uh, snafu we had with getting your audio connected. You can just stay on your cell phone. You can go ahead and mute that phone because uh, that's how you'll communicate with us during Q&A. Uh, speaking of Q&A, uh, our First speaker, uh, Simin, should be joining on the phone Thank you, Jeff. as well. Uh, Simin, are you, Simin, are you on the line? Just want to make sure. a few questions come in. So uh, even though okay, we're running great. a little bit behind schedule, great. we're going to go ahead and Our first question for you is that if the pharmacopoeia uh, has a total limit of NMP 2.0% and the MAPS recommendation limit should be NMP 1, what do you recommend? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Our next question is about uh, if a reference listed drug is showing an increase in impurity, can that be used or taken as a reference to justify an ANDA application? If it's higher than ICH23B limit, then we go first with the USP limit. Okay, great. Again, another question for you. Do companies need to complete accelerated if, uh, stability can, studies if the product fails specification before the last scheduled time point? And provide that information to the agency that this impurity is the same as the one in the French product. Sure. We will take it Do companies need to complete an accelerated stability study or studies 
if the product fails specification before the last scheduled time point. Um, I'm sorry, repeat it again. Okay, if um, company fails the accelerated study within um, any month, during six months accelerated, they should complete the accelerated okay, by great. six months. We One more question for some minute, we'll go to to understand it. better. About so the, the question is, for drug product total impurities, is this based only on specified impurities, um, or should they be including any unspecified, unidentified impurities in the total? The pair protocol, regardless if they fail or pass. It is only based on specified impurities, whether it's identified or unidentified. If, if firms are observing some particular um, unidentified, unspecified impurities or um, increasing, then um, I would suggest them, if they are um, getting close to identification threshold, I would suggest applicants to identify or um, list them as an honest uh, Okay, specified, great, thank you. Our next question is for Payne. Uh, so are there any guidances uh, describing the maximum processing and, uh, time for the manufacturer the of submission and, and, the and of batches? Impurity. And this way they can control these particular impurities during the stability of the product too. And that can be added to the total impurity. Well, uh, currently there is no uh, maximum processing time for manufacturing of batches, but you have to keep in mind that the product shelf life is determined based on the first ATI is introduced to uh, the formulation. So if you have a very long manufacturing time, then you're losing your shelf life claim or you have to provide extra long uh, stability, I mean, shelf life, in order to uh, fit into the shelf life uh, criteria. Okay, so, great. Um, Another question for you. Sufficient data should be what principle do, does FDA usually decide to evaluate CPP? To support the whole time, and also keep in mind that uh, your shelf life of the product uh, starts when the API is introduced to your uh, excipient. Um, well, I think uh, uh, we use a risk-based approach and uh, determine that uh, whether, you know, variation in those process uh, parameters would have significant impact on the product quality. So, for example, uh, if you have a high water-soluble uh, drug substance and uh, you're trying to dissolve it in water, and maybe the blending time may not be that critical. However, if you have okay, a great. Thank you. compound, and we have and another question about risk for you. It or make Can it you please describe how the agency would consider high risk intermediate? Uh, provide for example, you listed them on slide 15 and 16. That, uh, the uh, product quality can be met. So it's really depend on uh, risk.
Well, I think for that uh, particular slide, uh, I was referring to the final, uh, final blend because many times we see that uh, the uh, uh, manufacturer would, uh, you know, uh, make the blend and then uh, the next, whether it's the encapsulation step or the uh, tabling step, uh, it may be either performed, you know, later on or at a different facility. So um, in that case, uh, it will be considered a high-risk intermediate. And also, it depends on the uh, drug loading. Um, so typically, we are concerned with the stability of your uh, intermediate. However, if you have a low uh, dose Wonderful. Uh, Thank product, you. and then right, the another question for you. Very low. So you mentioned that microbial limits should be provided for binder solutions data, in some cases. If the, the dosage uh, form is solid oral dosage form, is a solid, dose there is solid no oral dosage no form where the microbial risk is low and release testing had adequate microbial specification, is it still necessary to control for a microbial limit for a binder solution? Well, if you're proposing, uh, 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 you know, extended uh, hold time for the microbial, uh, for the binder solution, and many times uh, the solution may contain uh, sugars or some carbohydrates, which is, you know, great. Thank uh, you good, so much. Uh, great. Right, we're going to go back over to Simon for a question. So in that case, uh, please explain your case study data on slide 14. If but the applicant has 12 months of long-term uh, stability without significant time, change on accelerated, so are they able to request 24 months of shelf life? Product. Okay, great, thank you. Another question for you. Is the agency expecting that a reconstituted product, should that be tested in all conditions as mentioned in the label, or can they just generate data for the worst case condition within the labeling recommendations? Yes, they can get, uh, they can request 24 months uh, uh, shelf life. Um, I would, uh, depends on the labeling. If labeling says that uh, the product is a stable in the refrigerator. Right. Great, and thank you. We have another in question, and in hopefully I'll read it correctly. I would recommend is it mandatory for, <laughs> it's a little confusing for me, but is it mandatory for ANDA batches packaged for bulk products into the final I mean, marketing I container I would that might be performed within 30 days? Then uh, perform at a uh, varying time point. Oh, yeah, yeah. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> uh huh. Is it mandatory for ANDA batches packaged in bulk product into the final ma marketing container? Can it be performed within 30 days? I believe this question is for pay, and um, this is about bulk packaging, if I don't mistake. So can you repeat that question again?
Well, I guess uh, each uh, company has their own SOP. And uh, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, if uh, there is a risk, you know, if you don't package, package that immediately and if it's going to have potential risk for the product. Right. And we have and one last question for education and specify is the a limit. BU sampling plan uh, as your per ASRM, is that, so ex if is that acceptable? If risk is identified and then you can just uh, incorporate into your uh, manufacturing Is the BU sampling so plan uh, really per uh, the ASRM, uh, is that an acceptable uh, one? Uh, can you repeat that question again? Is BU sampling? Uh, usually for BU sampling plan, uh, we like to see that uh, the sample size and also the location uh, are justified and usually uh, the sample size should not be uh, greater than uh, three times the unit dose of your uh, finished product. Uh, however, we do recognize okay. that sometimes you, uh, for Lisa, a very low dose, you, uh, and uh, you. you may need to uh, go uh, above the three act, and the, uh, in that case, uh, additional justification needs to be provided to uh, uh, demonstrate that uh, your uh, we are now going to go ahead and move on to the next session, uh, which is uh, going to uh, be presented.